Welcome to our session, Coupling Brownfield uh, VNFs Deployments with CNF. But before we start, let me introduce myself. I'm Sebastian Scheele, co-founder and CEO of uh, Kubernetes. And today my co-presenter is Yusuf. Yusuf, do you want to quickly introduce yourself? Yeah, thank you, Sebastian. I'm Yusuf. I'm a software engineer with Kubernetes. Uh, I work with the backend team or distributed system team, I would say, and on uh, the Kubernetes Kubernetes uh, platform. Okay, let's start. So let's have a quick recap. Um, so where are we coming from? So in the early days, we really used physical hardware for our network infrastructure. And over the time, it already moved forward to virtualized uh, infrastructure so that we put uh, some components into VMs. And um, one of the next things we want to do is, instead of running it into uh, VMs, we want to run this into containers. But this have uh, some challenges and there are also some uh, problems with this. And we want to show you how we can couple different components to together uh, because we think uh, we cannot go with the big bang approach. Uh, so we have the requirement that like all the different components need to work to, uh, together in a smooth way. And yeah, let's talk a little bit about the uh, evaluation. Um, so um, uh, physical and virtual infrastructure will stay for at least another decade. Uh, so it's not like that we can easily replace them. Um, even if we now starting with a containerized infrastructure, uh, we will have them um, for at least a decade. And so the only really feasible approach for um, telcos and telco operators is um, we need to move smoothly from uh, PNFs to VNFs and, and uh, uh, let's say in the future to become CNFs. Um, and I think we see a, a similar pattern what we already saw uh, in the enterprise when they're moving from monolith applications to micro, uh, microservice archi uh, architectures. So there are different patterns how to do this. So if you're starting completely from scratch, of course you can start with a, a CNF infrastructure. But uh, if you're having like in similar ways in an enterprise, you have your big monolith application. So you have your PNFs or VNFs. Um, you need to s slowly refactor them and putting them into containers so that you can really leveraging um, container infrastructure. Um, and this of course needs a lot of time. Um, and we need to do this in an incremental way. Um, and um, um, in increase in the future also the velocity of our development and also can leveraging new functionalities uh, on the new platform. Uh, but what is uh, the main challenge uh, to transforming from uh, uh, VNFs to CNFs? Um, so one part is definitely moving from physical hardware to uh, VMs was in general much easier uh, because we could, could put everything in a VM and it's running. Um, but many of the uh, network functions rely on specific kernel or specific kernel hacks. And this is now not so easy if we are using containers um, because uh, we cannot run different uh, uh, kernels on the same um, host. Uh, so we need to think about how we can leveraging this and what needs uh, to be done in the user space, what need what other services do we uh, need to be using? Like how can we connect to uh, DP, uh, DK or SIOV? And so it needs to be some new thinking around this. Um, and, um, but container can really provide more or less nearly direct access to the hardware with little or no vir virtualization overhead. So there's also a big benefit uh, in this new architecture. Um, Um, so, but when we're looking into this is now, when we want to go to uh, CNFs, VMS comes our new legacy again. So we, we need to think about how can we solve this? How can we smoothly involve? Um, but sometimes we really need a VM. Uh, when you have, for example, non-standard kernel modules uh, for specific components, uh, uh, when uh, the security folks ask for VM level isolation, um, and sometimes currently, um, if you're looking into your application uh, and it's a much more monolith application, um, it's not possible to do it right with containers. So I think then it needs first re-architecturing it. Um, and as long as this is not done, 
um, it makes not really sense um, to put it into containers. Um, but what we think is uh, VNFs and CNFs can live side by side on one platform um, because the big benefit of this is we can already establish uh, one operational model for containers and VMs. Um, so we can support legacy uh, brownfield and uh, greenfield uh, deployments and of course also mixed deployments. Um, and with this, we can run VNF um, functions in VMs and CNF functions in containers. Um, and, uh, but what we need there is we really want to connect them together um, in best case with the Kubernetes networking. Um, and so we have also a consistent model for on the networking layer for VNFs and CNFs. Um, so what should be the desired state? Uh, CNFs should coexist uh, with VNFs, uh, because as we saw at the beginning, uh, VNFs will live for a long time. And what we already want to do is like, we want to uh, renew our underlying infrastructure um, without replacing everything. And we want to really make this independent from our infrastructure and also vendor neutral, so that we can already change some things and moving slowly uh, more and more into a cloud native uh, ecosystem. Um, and we can also really leveraging the orchestration uh, for network functions. So having like self-healing capabilities, um, uh, heavily automation and, and zero touch uh, deployments. Um, but let's think about how we can embrace this. Um, one thing we believe is like uh, what we can use is an open source project called KubeWord, uh, where you put your virtual machines into a container. And with this, you can run your uh, VMs um, on a Kubernetes cluster and your containers on a Kubernetes cluster. And then you can leveraging uh, Kubernetes to orchestrate your containers and as well with KubeWord, orchestrate also your, your VMs. And um, um, with this, we can already build um, a centralized one platform and can also um, use a hardware acceleration um, if the application supports it. And so now I want to hand over to Yusuf. Um, he will now give you a demo um, how this could look like. Thank you, Sebastian. Give me a second, guys. Just set up my uh, environment. Um, and okay. Share my screen. Okay. Um, can you see the slides? Yep, working. Um, so yeah. Um, to illustrate was was Sebastian saying, on how to work. Uh, with v, uh, VNF and CNF together, we'll do a little demo. And uh, basically, um, the demo will be using a um, couple of components uh, that Sebastian mentioned. So obviously Kubernetes clusters, uh, also KubeVirt for the hypervisor on, on Kubernetes. Uh, we'll be using packet for the bare metal servers. And also we'll be using Kubernetes Cube one, uh, which is an open source tool to provision the infrastructure uh, and build the Kubernetes cluster quickly. So the idea here is that we have two sites, um, two physical sites, Amsterdam in uh, Netherlands and Tokyo in Japan. And we're gonna connect those two sites with um, the VMs, so running as VNF, in this case, using a channel with YGuard. And uh, I'm choosing YGuard because YGuard can illustrate what uh, Sebastian was saying before about the custom kernel needs. So typically, if you take an F5 load balancer VM or a 40 gate uh, a firewall VM, all those run custom kernels. So it's, a, well, you can't containerize them like that and you need to run, to run them as VMs. So uh, we will be running a YGuard uh, between the two sides and have a YGuard tunnel and then uh, we'll have a router that will act our, as a router doing the matting and as a firewall also. And finally, um, a web server, Nginx, uh, running inside uh, the Tokyo data center. Um, and 
to illustrate this demo, we'll have a couple of networks basically, and the goal is to be able to curl and ping uh, the web server in using an overlay network. So we'll be using VXLAN and specific sub networks that are running on top, I would say, of the Kubernetes network, so the classical CNI and pod network and service network. Um, so um, let me bring my terminal. So here we are. So we have, well, my terminal is separated in two. We have to the left the Asia side, so Tokyo side, to the right the European side. And let's have a look at what we have. Um, I won't go through the infra stuff. I mean, again, it's using Kube one and Kubernetes. So we just have um, working Kubernetes cluster right now. I've already proceeded with the installation because provisioning the VMs can take a couple of minutes. And obviously for the sake of the demo, I don't want, I mean, uh, people to wait for nothing. So we have uh, master nodes and one worker node. One worker node is more than enough. And um, if we go to the manifests, what we are installing. So basically we we'll start by installing the router. So if we open the manifest of the router, we have a simple deployment, uh, Kubernetes deployment. So we'll be using a custom image, but this custom image is actually a very simple image. It's an Alpine Linux image, and it has a couple of uh, applications that have been installed, like uh, bridge uh, utils, uh, TCP dump, and a couple of networking tools basically uh, installed inside of it. And what are we doing in this router? We are simply, well, building the blocks that we saw uh, on the diagram. So to put it simply, if we take back the diagram, um, on this router, we'll be building this part, so this half part and this half part, and doing the same for all the items. Um, so the first part is indeed uh, building the connection and overlay uh, between the CNF router and the future VM, I would say, so the WireGuard server running in the same site, so Tokyo. So we are creating a VXLAN interface. We are assigning, uh, assigning it a specific uh, subnet and IP, which is 192.168.255. And this will be called, I would say, the transfer network. So this subnet will be used uh, for the CNF router and the VM, the VM others on Tokyo, Amsterdam, to talk between each other each other. And we are using a bridge forwarding database append zero zero, blah, blah, blah. So basically this command uh, here, we are not using, uh, well, I'm not using for the sake of the demo, uh, multicast groups uh, with the VXLAN. I'm just using st static with uh, unicast uh, flooding, I would say, with, uh, uh, sorry, unicast with static flooding. So basically what does this mean that the VTEPs, so the virtual virtual channel endpoints uh, are static, you design them. So in this case, the VTEP for the uh, CNF router will be the VNFP, what I call it here, which is basically the WireGuard server. So running on QVert inside the same Kubernetes cluster. And all addresses, all the zeros addresses basically is telling you that all the bump frames, so the broadcast, un unknown unicast and multicast frame, will be sent to this uh, VTEP. Obviously, this setup is simple, uh, and it's good if you have a couple of VTEPs, but if you start having like thousands of VTEPs, obviously you want, you want to switch to, 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 multi to multicast. So this part's built uh, the first, I would say, interconnection between the CNF router and the uh, VM. And the second part is uh, building the interconnection between the web uh, server, the Nginx web server, and the CNF router. So here in this case, we are creating a new VXLAN interface using a different VXLAN ID and exposing it on, on, a, on a, well, a specific port, the same port uh, as the VXLAN ID. And with this one, we're creating another, uh, another network, which is basically uh, just to illustrate that we can have multiple subnetworks. Um, and that will be the network used for the interconnection or for the connection between this, uh, the CNF router and the web server. Finally, we are defining a couple of uh, rules, I would say, and nothing because this is acting as the, as the router. So what we are saying, we are saying uh, for the packet that will be going from the router to the web server, 
using the interface, the VXLAN interface, we have created uh, just source net them or masquerade them to be well, more specific and correct. And we are dropping all the packets and these three lines will act as a firewall. So we are dropping all the packets that uh, by default and we're only accepting uh, HTTP traffic and uh, packets that are in an established or related uh, state. So that's, I would say, that's it for the CNF router. So if we have a look at the, at the pods running currently, uh, so we have the first one CNF router and it is running properly. So next step is to build the web server. Web server is to be honest, pretty simple. Uh, it contains it's a deployment also. It contains the same custom image, but again, I mean, this is a very uh, lightweight uh, Alpine image, which has some uh, networking uh, application added to it. Um, so in this case, what we are doing, we are building the exact same thing we are connecting the two end together. So the CNF router and uh, the um, uh, web server. Um, so they are using both a VXLAN ID uh, 2002. So we are creating a VXLAN interface. We are assigning it an IP from the same subnet. And we are using the same basically uh, unicast uh, um, VXLAN uh, type of traffic. So this is for the first container. So I would say this is a sidecar container that we set up the networking. And uh, we have a second container which runs the Nginx web, uh, web server. So this set up the CNF web. And once we have it, we can do a kubectl get pods and we see that it is running. We still out of two ready. And finally, what we need to run and install is the VM in itself. So the VM, again, we said we are using kubevert as a hypervisor. And um, basically, it's a virtual machine instance. Um, so it's a type uh, of, uh, well, it's a kind that uh, for kubevert. And in this one, we're using a very simple image, I would say, uh, default image from kubevert provided by themselves, uh, Fedora image. It's running um, I think kernel 5.6.6, but wh whatever. I mean, you can use your own image in your own disk. Um, in my case, it's to run Wireguard, so this works fine. Um, so what we are doing, we are running two scripts basically. And to run those two scripts before going through those two, we are first creating a secret. And these secrets, it contain the base 64 um, Wireguard private key and public key. So the public key would be the public key of the other side the Amsterdam side in this case, as we are in Tokyo, and the private key of basically the Tokyo side. So those two will be mounted, and this is where we have a starting script that will add my SSH key and mount the secrets to a specific folder and mount the config map to a specific folder, and then we are running the scripts as part of the starting script. So if we go to the config map, this config map basically contains a shell script, and this shell script will set up the wireguard and the networking. So we're installing Wireguard, we're starting Wireguard, creating an interface of type Wireguard, and we are starting this. We're starting Wireguard and listening on the default Wireguard port 51A20, and uh, well, using the private keys that we have mounted thanks to, to, to Kubernetes features. Here's a secret. And also, we are setting up the peering with Amsterdam. So the peer here is basically the um, I would say the uh, public IP of uh, Amsterdam site. It's hard coded um, and allowed IPs. Well, this is the IP we allow to, to, to peer to. Um, then we set up the underlay address. So here, what I mean by underlay addresses is I would say the, the, the data plane between um, the Amsterdam site and uh, Tokyo site. Um, related to Wireguard. So we are setting up a subnet, uh, 192.168.102.24, and we are also creating a static route, telling that every traffic going to the 168.16 goes to the tunnel. So with this done, we also need to set up the overlay, so the v VXLAN. So basically, um, what we are doing is, um, again, uh, we're not using multicast just for the sake of the demo. We're using uh, 
uh, is a unique gas with static floating. And um, what we are creating here is a VXON interface with a specific VXON ID, a different one. And we are appending all the zeros addresses and send them to the VTEP, in this case, the 192.168.102.2. And if you have paid attention, this is dot one. So dot two is uh, basically Amsterdam site. And then we also set up the transfer network. This is another network uh, that we are using on top. And uh, basically this network, as I said, is the one that is used basically to, to let the two VMs and the router speak uh, between themselves. So here, to put it simply, we have configured this part. So now we still need to configure this part and have the connection between the router and the, uh, the VNF uh, VM here working. So if we go back to um, the terminal, I'm creating again another VXLAN interface with the same VXLAN ID as, as, as the CNF router. So 2001, same thing for the forwarding database. Um, and basically, this set up the VXLAN part. And now we are using basically what we would call a layer two handover to layer three. So, what, how we are doing that? we are creating a bridge, which is basically a virtual switch of layer two. And we are adding the interfaces uh, that we have created before, and we are setting everything up. So once this is done, we apply the manifest and normally we should see uh, a pod called the launcher that has the VM running. So once this is done, we need to expose some port for this, um, why guard VM because uh, well it's needed to speak uh, well it's needed to speak with a Y guard and basically I've exposed three ports SSH one well this one in a way it's just for me if I want or for anyone I mean if you want to reach the VM the SSH uh, a cluster IP and you can see that this one is uh, listening uh, targeting port 2001 on UDP so this is a VXLAN port and finally uh, a not port, uh, not port, well, service of type not port. And this is because we won't be using any load balancer. We'll directly target the, the worker node uh, to have the tunnel working. And we are exposing the default, uh, basically, I would say, Y guard port and, uh, as a not port. And we have a port assigned it, assigned here randomly. And we'll be using this port on the Amsterdam site. And I will show you this uh, in a couple of minutes. So. Once this is done, we have finished everything on the Weigard site, uh, the Tokyo site. In Amsterdam, we'll do exactly the same, basically. If we go to the manifest here in this case, we have not that much. We just have the VM01 to apply. And this is exactly the same as the one in Tokyo. The only difference, I would say, uh, if you go down where, obviously the Weigard keys are private key is different, uh, this makes sense. And the setting up of the Weigard tunnel, here we are adding, well, we are changing, we are adding, well, we're changing the public, uh, the public key, obviously this is the one from Tokyo. And the endpoint, basically this endpoint is the, since we're using not port to expose the port on the Tokyo side, is uh, if we do a kubectl get nodes, you can see this is the IP, external IP of, the worker node. So it's targeting the external IP and the port 30021. Uh, you can see it's a not port port of white guard. So we are creating also the same uh, the 102.2, so the same control network for the Y guard. And we are creating the VXLAN interface, etc. etc. It's exactly the same transfer network. And finally, this is a little change. We are adding a static route telling you if you want to go to the 164-16 network. Uh, this is a network that we created between the CNF router and the web server. You have to go through this uh, basically node or point or endpoint. Well, in this case, it's, it's, it is the CNF router and the CNF router will have a route table for, for this specific network. So we apply this one. And if when we apply it, kubectl get pods, 
we have this VLT launcher, which is basically the VM. And with VLT CTL, we can basically uh, easily access the, um, the VM. So let me use that console kip config VM01. And yeah, so we can connect to it. So now, logically, if we are, we should be able to target, uh, sorry, we should be able to target um, the web server. So it's CNF web, so capital exec minus IT, uh, CNF web, and we're just gonna put IPA, should be enough. So it's 164.0.100. So if we do a curl and we target it, and there we go. So we are able to reach the Nginx web server. So now if we want to ping, this is not possible because if you recall correctly, we have not allowed this type of traffic on the uh, web server, uh, on the, sorry, on the, on the router. So if we, um, actually we can just exec inside the router and uh, let me see what type of rules we have inside the forward chain of the filter table. So yeah, we are not allowing anything. The default policy is drop and there is no ICMP. So let's, let's add a rule just to allow this type of traffic and uh, let it act let this router act as a firewall. So we'll insert in the forward chain and just simply put a minus P for protocol, ICMP and the targets accept. And there we go. We are having the ping response and you can see that the latency time is pretty high because well, it's, uh, it's Japan. So we have a 240 milliseconds latency. And uh, yeah, that's it for the demo. So in summary, we were able to use the VMs to set up a tunnel and set up an overlay network and have traffic being sent from one side to the to other side using the VMs, the VNF, and be routed properly in the Kubernetes cluster, the target one, using the Kubernetes CNI uh, capabilities. So. So, yeah, in, in summary, um, for this talk, uh, everything related to zero touch networking, so basically um, provisioning a device without uh, a user interaction and the service management, well, it helps to have obviously smaller slices and uh, to literally couple your puzzle pieces and to use CNFs with Kubernetes orchestration. But this is not simple. This is not always the case. As I said, we have, we have lots of, I would say legacy vendors that are still very popular like F5 or, or even, I mean, for logs like Splunk that, well, don't have these containerized uh, solutions and you still must run those VMs. So we need those virtual machines, but now thanks to projects like Kubevert, we are able to run them side by side with uh, cloud native network functions and we can have the advantages of both words. So thank you very much for listening. And uh, that's it from our side. Yep, thanks a lot. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. Bye.